workshop on legal methodology packaged commodities rules basically these packaged commodities rules are very important rules which plays a very important role in the everybody's life because nowadays large number of products are being sold through packaged commodities and we are getting their quantities which cannot be checked in front of the consumer or consumer may not get checked its quantity easily so what we feel the packaged commodities rules should be implemented properly in the prepackaged commodities which are basically ensure the quantity and the minimum requirements which have to be fulfilled through these legal methodology packaged commodities rules for the in the interest of consumers as we have with us shri Uh, B. N. Dixit, Director, Legal Methodology, Government of India. I would like to request, sir, kindly speak two words, and we can start this workshop. Uh, thank you, Ashutosh ji. Uh, I feel privileged to start with you today. Uh, you have raised the very good questions. The why the prepackaged commodity is uh, very important, and it is going to be very popular. Uh, because of the regulations, the regulations uh, has given the lot of declarations and the confirmation of net quantity and MRP for the consumers, and so many other things. That's the reason it has become the first choice of the consumers that everything is in package guarantee. Then it is giving us the. Correct quantity as well as the quality are also checked. So the people are preferring that very things to purchase that very things in their houses. And day by day at the international level also, it is increasing also. You might be knowing that at advanced countries, international level, most of the things are sold only in packaged government. And in India, though, the, since uh, uh, we have to prioritize more about the packaged commodity, and we have to educate the more manufacturers and packers to bring uh, under the regulations, so that uh, they may also help the consumers, and uh, they can also get the benefit because uh, the checking of the net quantity. Also gives the valuable uh, valuables input for them also, uh, as it is for the consumers. So by that way, it is very fruitful. fruitful. Now this very day, uh, the government of India has brought the QR code uh, for the electronic product, uh, which was from the earlier, but it was not regulated properly. So now it has been regulated. i think you can highlight all those very things in this very seminars and uh, participant will be benefited and the maximum number of the industry will be also benefited consumers will be benefited and uh, officers of the legal methodology they will also get the good knowledge chairman thank you ashutosh ji thank you very much sir for your kind words certainly the purpose of this type of workshops is to create awareness among the manufacturers industries our state government officers as well as consumer organizations who are working for the benefit of the consumers sir the purpose uh, we are actually feel privileged that up to some extent we are able to save guard the interest of consumers through these type of workshops because slowly slowly sooner and later we will find that most of our stakeholders which include not only the industries but also the consumers vcos and other part other stakeholders will also understand the requirements of law which will support them which will help them in the interest of the industry in the interest of the consumer sir it is very important when i see that uh, we, the prepackaged commodities and we, when we are not going we have not want to declare some of the required information of the prepackaged commodity it is actually somewhere pinches a lot 
to all the to the stakeholder to the other people who are working in this field because when you feel when you see the prepackaged commodity outside our country you will find that all the declarations whatsoever are required are given in a proper way but in our case i feel many times that some of the declarations are at another place some of the declarations are at another place recently i have seen one example in which even the quantity was less and it is very difficult if a consumer is taking one uh, bottle of a particular commodity he may not be aware that how much should be the quantity or whether the quantity is complete or not so these things actually pinches the consumer many times i don't say that the industry itself does this but many times when it is not properly sealed the package or the bottle is not properly sealed there is always a chance of its leakage not only the not necessary that somebody is reducing the amount but many times it happens that it is during the transportation this amount may reduce but you can't leave it like this it has to be sealed properly so that the commodity can be complete when it is being given to a consumer similarly large number of declarations we have very few declarations out of which large number of declarations are already given but even after at some time we find that the declarations are not legible we are not able to see the declarations we are not able to read the declarations and they are given at different different locations different different positions where the consumer where it is very difficult for the consumer to read to find where it is given so my request i am urging to all the industries kindly when you are making a prepackaged commodity or making a declaration kindly ensure that it is for you only we are selling we, we may be the manufacturer of one product but rest 99% products we are actually buying from the market so we are actually consumers all of us are consumers up to some extent for few products we are the manufacturer but for rest of the products we are the consumers so my request to all the industries we have to be very careful how much products we are we are buying in the market whether the quantity is correct or not whether the declarations are given or not and as with the digitalization of these uh, the government of india the russian government of india we uh, vision the legal methodology package commodities rules have also given some provision of this uh, online or the qr code declarations now sir we have with us our honorable joint secretary sir who is here to uh, to motivate us who is here to uh, bless us for doing these type of conferences i as sir i was just discussing sir today we are having the subject of prepackaged commodities because now more than uh, i think more than 70% of the products are being sold in the prepackaged form so it is the responsibility of all of us of all of the of all the stakeholders to ensure that all the regulations what's are required for the information of a consumer are correct quantity is correct so these are the basic things we will discuss what are the requirement of law we will discuss discuss today sir before that i would like to request you to kindly say few words and inaugurate the conference please sir thank you <clears throat> thank you very much uh, ashutosh agarwal ji uh, i am indeed delighted to be present in this rrsl organized uh, conference workshop on pre packaged commodities as uh, you would be knowing that uh, there's a lot of initiative which is being taken by the legal metrology department under the department of consumer affairs and by rrsl amdavad and other rrsls in the country to educate people and the manufacturers about the packaged commodities and what are the requirements of uh, the government and uh, maybe internationally we are also compliant with the declarations which are given on the packaged commodity rules now uh, as all of us uh, go and we are all consumers we continuously buy packaged commodities and therefore every citizen in this country whether a resident of this country or whoever comes and visits that he is affected by the pre packaged commodity rules and the legal metrology requirements and declarations thereof many of these have been harmonized with the international standards and requirements and therefore India is progressing very fast in the packaged commodity arena, and uh, uh, as you would also be knowing that uh, there is a large uh, uh, focus of the government on making trade and commerce more commensurate, so that a large number of investments come either in packaged commodities or any other industrial arena in the country, 
and uh, the government is wishing that we should be multiplying the economy and taking the business and transaction and trade to $5 trillion. So the entire economy is focused and largely it is dependent on the consumers and packaged commodities and what are the regulations there. Now, if I may just deep dive a little bit in the pre-packaged commodity regulations, uh, one is very common, which all of us see if we go and buy a packaged commodity is, what is the MRP? And largely it is mostly understood by the people that uh, we are not supposed to give monies uh, for this particular pre-packaged commodity beyond the MRP value. So an MRP is a essential requirement. Similarly, declarations like best before date, if it's a food packaged commodity and a food commodity, then it should have what is the time period till which the consumer who's probably buying that the prepackaged commodity can consume the item and so on and so forth. Another major requirement which has come up is uh, where exactly this particular commodity has been manufactured or whether it has been imported. And we see that large number of items in the country which are prepackaged are also imported in the country. So the government is trying to ease the rules there also, and they are trying to bring in modern features like QR codes and many other things on the pre-packaged commodity. If those declarations along with other uh, mandatory declarations are given in uh, numeric forms, uh, code is also given, it will give a better description about what is the content of that commodity and all the other features which have been declared in the pre-packaged commodity in uh, maybe word form or numeric form. So I think uh, it is extremely essential that uh, fair declarations are made by the manufacturers on the pre-packaged commodities. They rely to the government requirements. They comply themselves to the government uh, requirements. And we internationally harmonize our products and services so that our packaged and pre-packaged commodities are also exported abroad and they are acceptable there. Whether the quality is there, the declarations are there, they are in tune with the international legal metrology requirements of pre-packaged commodities. So uh, I hope uh, that uh, uh, the today's speakers and the details which will be given will be very interesting. It will be useful for the students as well as for industry and exporters per se. And uh, these kind of uh, seminars will also evoke enough response as to what can be the better areas where the government can further focus to improve our legislation, our rules and uh, declarations on pre packet commodity or what are the challenges which are being brought. So I hope that by end of the session, uh, the RRSL team in Ahmedabad and the legal metrology department will have enough suggestions for the government and the ministry to look forward to and we will certainly take them up so that the India progresses at a faster pace and it goes at a tangent of five trillion dollar economy. With these words, I uh, welcome everyone and I wish you uh, a very healthy discussion in this seminar and workshop today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words and motivated words. And certainly our purpose is the same that how we can make this economy a five trillion dollar economy. We are working in this direction. We are trying our best. We want to make more and more manufacturers in the field of legal methodology, in the field of waste and measures and the, how we can help through the pre package community use. We are trying our best. So we will have a small presentation today and then we'll go in the questions. So I'm just going to start the presentation of what are the recent developments in the legal methodology package community use with your permission. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. So, first of all, I would like to say that uh, the consumer helpline number is 1915 and uh, the cybercrime helpline number is 1930. Uh, kindly note down this, all the participants, whenever you need any type of help 
these numbers are available uh, 24 hours, 24 by 7, we can use it. Legal metrology. As we are all aware about the metrology, metrology is nothing, it is the measurement. When we are doing any type of measurement, when we are taking any type of weighing or measuring through an equipment, it is a measurement or it is a metrology. If this measurement is being done with some rules and regulations or some laws under the under which this measurement is being done, it is called legal metrology. And legal metrology is nothing, but basically it defines the legal requirements to measurements and measuring instruments. The purpose of this legal metrology is to ensure public guarantee from the point of view of security and accuracy of the payments and measurements. Whatsoever the way is being done, whatsoever the measurements are being done, public has a guarantee that the payment and the measurement or the quantity which are they are actually getting, value for money they are getting is correct. Whatsoever the value is being given, it is correct. After sitting over here, I can give you a guarantee. I can take this responsibility that whatsoever the commodity you are getting in one liter of bottle of oil or one liter of bottle of water or one kg of any commodity, it is actually one kg within its tolerance limit, which is as per international practice. So this is one, this is first part of this purpose of this legal methodology. Second, we just want to create a confidence in trade, industry, and consumer. Basically, when all of us are having a confidence upon each other, certainly it, it will flourish the whole structure, whole being and measuring structure in the country. It creates it creates a harmonious environment for conducting businesses and the purpose of this legal methodology is basically to support the industry. How we can support the industry, how we can say how, which type of environment we need for our industry in the country, it depends upon all of us, upon all stakeholders. The legal methodology, as we are all aware, it is not a new subject. If we talk from Indus Valley Civilization, we were having a brick of size of 3 is to 2 is to 1. Similarly, when we come out from this Indus Valley Civilization, before this British rule, we were having the Chalakya, there was a complete principle of uh, being and measuring or the economics that Every weight and measure has to be verified and stamped by the government after every six months. So these were the rules made by our ancient people. Later on, in the Mughal period also, we are all aware that the units of Gaj, units of Ser, Tula, etc. were used at that time. And at that time, it was also very strict that the weighing and measuring or the transactions which are being done with the public should be correct. Later on, during the British period also, we were having at that time four pound and second, these units were used and after the freedom, immediately after the freedom, the government understood that this is very much required for the international trade and we immediately became the member of International Bureau of Weights and Measures for signing the meter convention and now we are using only the SI system of units and at the same time, we make, became the member of International Organization of Legal Metrology to understand, to have it free trade, free trade in the, in the, all over the countries, all over the world that Whenever whatsoever the commodity we are weighing or we are measuring is acceptable to all. So these are type of things we started in the beginning and the constitution of India also have a provisions for these weights and measures. Under entry 50 of union list, we have the provisions of establishment of standards of weights and measures. It is the responsibility of the union government under the union list that all the standards have to be maintained, have to be established by the government of India and under this provision government has made large number of laboratories the regional reference standards laboratories even at the state level also a lot of supports were given by the government of India we have the standards equipments we have the standards standards documents all the rules and regulations have been framed under the under this provision of entry 50 we have the concurrent list under 33A, before this 33A, there was a provision under the state list for the enforcement of weights and measures. But in 1976, this, when, the, when this 76 amendment was made in the uh, constitution of India, we brought this subject of enforcement under the concurrence list. Now it is a joint responsibility of the union and the state governments to enforce and implement the standards of weights and measures in the whole country in a uniform manner. And that's why we have a unified act in this country, which is the legal methodology act now. 
this legal metallurgy act if we talk about this legal metallurgy act we are all aware this legal metallurgy act was passed in 2010 and got the assent of honorable president of india on 30th january 2010 this act came into force from 1st of april 2011 after repealing the standards of base and measures act 1976 and the standards of base and measures enforcement act 1985 both of these two acts were framed by the government of india in 1976 and 1985 for the implementation and the enforcement of the provisions of fair and measures uh, these two acts are basically very similar to the british act british fair and measures act 1972 which is still in force in uk and this single act the legal metallurgy act has repealed both of these two acts 76 act and the 85 act it is a very simple unified act which is have covering the provisions of both of these two acts but being a very simple act large number of provisions are being made under the rules and that that is the beauty of this legal metallurgy act that very with a very simple and very unified simple small act we have covered all type of weighing and measuring all type of requirements of weighing and measuring the objective of this act to establish and enforce standards of weights and measures regulate trade and commerce in weights and measures and other goods which are sold distributed or by weight measure or number so any type of transaction which is taking place through the weight or measure we this act actually regulate all type of trade and commerce and the goods which are being sold through weight measure or number i can say that i am buying one pencil it is also covered under this pre packaged commodities or under this legal metallurgy act department of consumer affairs is a nodal agency for the implementation of this legal metallurgy act if we talk about this legal metallurgy act 2009 it is a very simple and single act which covers the provisions of both of these two acts when we discuss this act with the, at the international level we found that this act is a very very beautifully drafted act and i have not seen any of the country which has which has told me which has said said that this act may be revised or this act may have some good provisions or this the provisions which can be even reconsidered otherwise in all the columns they say that very beautifully drafted act you have in india and that's why in india we are we are basically implementing this weights and measures this legal metallurgy in the with the help of in this country which is having a population of about 130 crores so with this large number of population with a very few officers of legal metallurgy to implement the system even after after sitting over here i am giving you the guarantee that you are getting what's over the quantity is declared on a pre packaged commodity you are getting it so this is only possible we have a very good structured format of the laws rules and regulations this act only has 57 sections the penalty provisions under this act were increased because the last time the provisions were made in 1976 and later on when this 2009 act came it was about 40 years and we have to see that what new provisions we have to consider under the new act and what should be the penal provisions because the fines at the time or the compounding at the time was very small similarly we have made a provision for the standardization of units of weights and measures now all the units are on the basis of metric system all si systems we are uniting we are using only the metric system in india because we are the meter convention signatory country and we are only using si system meter kilogram and second which is the mk system which we uh, right now we are using <clears throat> we see that there are many countries like usa and uk even they are the meter convention signatory country even after they are not using this si system completely somewhere they use foot pound second somewhere they use gallons or other type of units in us which is not actually the si system or the metric system of units under this act we have made the provisions for the declarations on pre packaged commodities what will be the declarations on a pre packaged commodities are being made under this act so that you know the consumer should know the manufacturer should know the industry should know and the importer should know what are the requirements i have to fulfill when i am bringing a product in the market similarly the approval of model rules were made under this act we have a provision that any weight or measure which will be manufactured or imported in this country should comply the basic specific requirements of law and that's why these approval of model provisions have been made under this act see we this act also prohibits the manufacturing selling or repairing of weights and measures without being having the license from the state governments these all licenses are issued by the state governments government of india does not issue any type of license similarly all any type of being a measuring instrument which is used for transaction or protection whenever you are using 
or you are selling any equipment which may be used for transaction or for protection has to be verified and stamped by the legal metallurgy officers of the state governments basically it says seven function and earlier before that during the archaica time also it was being a seven function it was told under this under his under his ban that whatsoever the weights and measures are used in any transaction they has to be verified and stamped after every six months through the government of through the government uh, government machinery similarly under this act we are also having the similar provision stamping and verification of all type of weights and measures what is the verification of weights and measures what type of verification is required any being imaging instrument which is used for transaction transaction means any type of transaction transaction means sale purchase royalty duty basis any type of activity if you are doing through any weighing or measuring instrument suppose a beverage which is installed at a place which is not used by the person for his own use but on the basis of this beverage he is providing he is saying that this much weight is the weight is being carried out by this beverage and this wave this weight or this vehicle when it goes and it shows this unit this slip of the weight this beverage has to be verified protection protection is also very important and very you know it covers a lot what it says protection of any human being protection of any animal protection of any vegetation protection of any commodity or anything which in under of any equipment or any weight or measure by the wave by the observation by the units taken of this or readings taken from this equipment are used for the protection of anything will be covered under this legal metrology act see i can just give you a very simple example if a if if a, if a geyser which is having a thermostat or a provision of temperature that when a particular temperature reaches it simply cut down it stops but many times we came to know that this this geyser is a blast how it is somewhere is your state somewhere is temperature device or sensor sensor was not working properly because of that it was not calibrated it was not tested when it was placed in a in a in a teaser so all these things have to be considered in india we are not doing all these things but still up to some extent some of the somebody has to look after all these aspects of safety or accuracy of a weighing or measuring instrument under this act we also have a provision that a company can nominate one director of his company which is responsible for the offences may be done by under this act under by the company and this particular director will only be compounded not all the directors earlier there was no provision of this uh, this one director nomination and that's why uh, under the old act all the directors were used to be booked and they have to compound the offence so this is the very good provision we have made in the interest of industries and we also have a provision of verification by the private government approved test center it is a very good provision which we have made that if an industry which is having the company which is having the capability having the equipment having the resources and want to do some verification of weights and measures which is being done by the state government officers they can also do it we at rrsl ahmedabad we are also doing this working we are also working as gtc we have done large number of weighing and measuring instruments and already defined already given under the first schedule of the government approved test center rules we have done we have issued the verification certificate and we are just helping the industry similarly the private labs can also come up for this even the government labs we can consider large number of government labs which are working in this field and they have the competency they have the equipments they have all resources which are required for this they can be considered for this they can immediately submit an application and they can get this this be uh, this way of government approved test center working under this act basically as i told earlier this act is a very small act which just have only 57 sections it is just 17 pages act but all this uh, this is basically i should say a skeleton of the legal methodology the whole flesh and blood is under these rules the first rule is general rule name is general but it is not actually general it it covers all type of technical specifications of all the weighing and measuring instruments framed or verified tested in india as per the legal methodology act 2009 it may be the non automatic weighing instrument it may be the automatic weighing instrument it may be the railway bridge it may be the petrol pump it may be the cng it may be the lng it may be any type of kilometer or it may be any type of in motion road way bridges all type of equipments are covered under this general rule it is a very big and lengthy rule which is called general rules and it is very important we used to test all the equipments as per this general rule or as per the recommendations made by the oiml international organization of legal metallurgy 
we have another very important rule today we will discuss about this is it is a package commodities rules and as we are all aware general secretary sir has already told that it is very important how to support the industry through these package commodities rules large number of amendments have been made during the last few years to safeguard to ease for ease of doing business or to protect the interest of industry how they can do they can comply the requirement of the law similarly one another legal methodology approval of models rule we have we as i already told you we have a provision that any weight or measure which will be manufactured or imported into the country it has to be tested or it has to be approved by the government of india the purpose is that the equipment which is being manufactured or imported is actually complying the specifications international specifications we are not doing anything as per our own standard all of all are these standards are basically international recommendations with some small modifications we used to adopt in india as the bis adopt the iso standards we adopt the oml standards similarly we have an another national standards rules national standards rules are very important rules in which under which we have made what type of standards in india i know that all type of way whether you are using in any science any research any r and d all units are mentioned in this national standard rule how these standards will be maintained where these standards will be maintained how the reference standards will be made how the reference standards will be verified all these provisions are made under these national standards rules we also have a numeration rule how a number will be written in india many times we used to put a comma in between like 1 1 lakh 1 comma 00 comma 000.00 like that we used to because you know it is very easy, easy to read but generally as per the international practice we don't like this we can give some space in between 1 space 00 space 000 so that is the international numeration but in india we used to follow Three digits, then two digits, then two digits, then two digits. At international level, we comply. We we follow three digits method. Three digits, then three digits, and then three digits. So any of the system can be used in the banking system. Also, they use, they comply these type of numeration rules. Even the coinage rules. When earlier we were having a coinage rule earlier in 1950s, that that was later on repealed, and all these legal matters and the standards of Basel Majors Act cover it, under which we can use one, two, and five. One rupee, two rupee, five rupee. 10 paisa 20 paisa 50 paisa so like that these type of structures were made under this legal methodology we have one institute which provides the training the awareness of legal methodology in the country not only the people of the country but also the nearby or other country which are being sponsored by unido or other other ptb or other organizations which send their officers for training in the in, in of the legal methodology in india we used to train them regularly and again we have this government approved test center rules which provides how this how this uh, rules can how this uh, rule can support the industry for verification and stamping of weights and measures Pre packaged commodity. It is basically a very interesting subject. I just wanted to give you just brief about the legal methodology. Otherwise, the purpose is to discuss about this legal methodology, pre packaged commodities rules. What is a pre packaged commodity? Under Section 2L of the Act, pre packaged commodity has been defined. Pre packaged commodity means a commodity which is being packed when the consumer was not present at that time. And this commodity is was filled in this packet. Consumer was not present, and it may be of any nature. It may be sealed or it may be open. And when the product, but the product, what somebody is being filled in this pre-packaged commodity has a predetermined quantity, will called will be considered as a pre-packaged commodity. That means a packet in which one liter of water is filled, one liter of uh, water is filled, but it is not sealed. It is open. Even after it will be considered as a pre-packaged commodity because consumer does not know how much when the commodity was filled, how much was that, but it is mentioned that it is one liter, so it has a predetermined quantity. Under Section 2F, a word label is defined. Label. How what declarations have to be made? How the declarations have to be made? It is very important. People say how the declaration will be made. The label very well defined. It means any written, marked, stamped, printed, or graphic matter affixed to or appearing upon any prepackaged commodity is a label. So we have to put a label. Label means either you just put it by hand that this much is the quantity. This is the all declarations I am giving by hand. Or you can put it a graphic matter. You can put a stamp. You can put a mark. And we have seen. We, we used to see that on these pre-packaged commodities, we used to see there is an online stamping, online declarations on a pre-packaged commodity. So all these things are already allowed under the law. You can put a stamp. You can put print. You can go do anything. But the declaration has to be given under this Legal Methodology Act. 
2009, we have these two provisions, this section 18, 18.1 and 18.2. 18.1 basically provides for declaration and all a prepackaged commodity, what, how the declarations will be made and restricts of manufacturing, packing, selling, importing, distributing of any prepackaged commodity until this, com this commodity has all the declarations prescribed under the Act. And these standards, these declarations are being prescribed under the legal methodology prepackaged commodities rules. Section 18.2 speaks that the declaration or advertisement mentioning the retail sale price shall contain the net quantity or number contained in the package. How much is the net quantity? Whenever they're declaring that this cost of this product is 10 rupees, how much is the commodity? How much is the quantity inside this packet? It has to be mentioned. Even if you are making a declaration on a TV, on a newspaper, this declaration must have the quantity, how much quantity the consumer is going to buy with this, con with this cost. We have the prepackaged commodities under this section 36.1 and 36.2, the penal provisions are being made. Section 36.1 very clearly speaks whenever anybody is selling, manufacturing, packing, importing, distributing, delivering, or otherwise transferring, offering, or exposing, or possessing for sale any prepackaged commodity which does not conform to the declarations of the package as provided in the Act, which will be fined up to rupees 25,000 rupees for the first offense. If a company does not give any declaration, the first first fine, first penalty will be rupees 25,000 rupees. Second offense, it will be up to 50,000 rupees. And after that, for subsequent offense, the, the provision of fine as well as imprisonment is made under the law. Either fine up to rupees 50,000 rupees, not less than 50,000, but which may go to up to 1 lakh, or with imprisonment up to 1 year or 2. So these are the provisions made under the section 36 one of the legal methodology act for the declaration of a prepackaged commodity similarly under section 36 two we are also defining whenever anybody is selling manufacturing packing importing any prepackaged commodity in which the quantity is less this is short delivery and it basically creates a big loss big big loss to the country because when a prepackaged commodity which is giving less quantity and lacks of products are being made lacks of packages are being made at one time and there is a small less a small uh, short delivery of a com of this commodity it is the loss to the economy is very high so we are very we have to be very careful when we are packing a prepackaged commodity this is our responsibility to ensure the quantity is correct and after sitting over here when i am taking this responsibility that this quantity is correct i am telling you it is 100 percent correct because i have seen large number of prepackaged manufacturing units large number of prepackaged in the market but i have never seen the quantities less declarations may be here and there but quantities in most of the cases is correct However, if you find anything, you kindly let us know. We will certainly take an action as per the rules, provisions of the law. In this case, if the quantity is less for the first offense, fine is up to rupees 50,000, but not less, not less than 10,000 rupees. And for second and subsequent, subsequent offense, there is a provision of imprisonment up for fine not less than 50,000, but it may go up to 1 lakh rupees or, it, or with both. So the provisions are being made considering the loss to the economy. And I hope that we are we are taking it very seriously. We are not giving any of the prepackaged commodity, which is less in short, which is short in delivery, short in quantity. If we talk about the prepackaged commodities rules, under rule 2H, basically the principal display panel is defined. And whenever we discuss with many of our friends, we find that the, there is a, always a big problem about the principal display panel, how the declaration has to be made, where the declaration has to be made. This is always a big problem. The rule itself very clearly speaks in relation to a package means the total surface area of the package where the information required under these rules are to be given in the following manner. Basically, if I talk, if I say that this is a prepackaged commodity, the whole surface area, including this, this, and this, all surface area is a principal display panel. We have to consider, we have to take in consideration the whole surface area of this packet. If we take like this, this is a simple example of a packaged commodity. Let's say it's a packaged commodity. This area, this area, the whole curve area, and whole bottom and the top, all these areas are the principal display panel. How it has to be defined? All the information could be grouped together and given at one place. It is very much required. Otherwise, you have to search here and there where the declaration has to be seen, where the declaration has been made. Similar, but at the same time, law also provides a provision that the pre-printed information can be grouped together and can be given at one place and 
online information can be grouped together and given at another place. So basically, rules provides that the declaration should be given at one place. However, if you are giving some declaration online and some offline, then you can give it at two places. So this is the way how the prepackaged commodities defines the declarations on a uh, packaged commodity. What are the declarations required under these rules on all prepackaged commodities? It is very important. If you will see that we are not asking last uh, way, uh, thing, which is actually not required. Whenever you enter anywhere, you simply some the person will ask, "What is your name? From where you are?" The same thing we are asking from a project from a prepackaged commodity. Name and address of the manufacturer, packer, and the importer. Who has manufactured this product? Who has packed this product? Or who has imported this product? So anything can be given. If you are an importer, you just can declare the name of the name and address of the importer. There is no need to give the declaration of name and address of the manufacturer. Similarly, if somebody is packer and he is packing on behalf of others, he can give the declaration of his packing name and address of the packer and the manufacturer. So see, when I I, I go somewhere, first of all I will tell my name. What is my name? I am Ashutosh Agarwal. Similarly, when the packers somebody see. It, it itself says who has manufactured it. So it's a very simple thing. I think we should not have any problem to declare the name and address of the manufacturer. Similarly, country of origin. It is very important that where it has been manufactured or from where it has been actually originated. Because I don't want to buy a product from a particular country. Why you want to force me to buy this product from a particular country? I don't buy. So I don't want. So this is my right. As a consumer, this is my right that I should know from where this product is actually being imported. And a consumer, let the consumer should, should be given the liberty to decide whether he wants to buy or not. Third, we want the common or generic name of the commodity. It is also very important. What the commodity you have filled inside the packet, it has to be mentioned on the package commodity itself. Next is net quantity. Net quantity in standard unit of weight, measure, or number. Of the commodity in the package. Basically, when we talk about the standard, this Legal Metrology Act is only speaking about the standards. Earlier, its name it, it name was the Standards of Weights and Measures Act. Standards means we have to see what are the standards which have to be maintained. Net quantity in a standard unit of weight or measure or number. What is the standard unit of weight? Weight means either kg, gram, or milligram. Measure means either liter, milliliter. These type of units which are actually required, which are actually understand by all. Earlier we were not aware about when we talk about 50 years back, we were not aware that how much is feet, how much is meter, and how much is centimeter. But nowadays I think that the children only understand about meter and centimeter. They don't understand how much is foot, how much is feet. We don't understand when we talk about these type of units because with the passage of time, now all the generation, all the people are aware about the standards system of units. Next is MRP, maximum retail price, which is inclusive of all taxes. Many times we have seen that somebody is selling the prepackaged commodity and putting the tax or GST over and above it, which is 100% wrong because MRP includes all. I have seen many times that in some restaurants, in some hotels, what they are doing, they are selling a prepackaged commodity on a particular price, let's say 100 rupees, and when they make a bill, they put it MRP, GST over it. So I don't understand how it happens because the products under which GST has already been taken, how you are charging the GST again? It has already been taken in the product because MRP is inclusive of all and we have to be very careful this MRP cannot nobody can charge over and above MRP in the name of anything MRP is the maximum price which has to be paid and now earlier there was a problem but now more and more people are aware of that and we are getting large amount of complaints regularly we used to come get the complaints that somewhere it is being sold at the higher price and whether it is a hill station whether it is somewhere in the outside the out in the outskirts or the Dhabas outside the city so we have to be careful that these these things are not allowed and nobody can sell over and above mrp if we talk about the next is very important which we have recently introduced which is the unit sale price earlier we were we used to get regularly the request from the industries that we don't want to we want to pack the prepackaged commodity in any shape in any size and uh, we were having a second schedule of the package commodities rules which defines that 19 commodities has to be packed in a particular prescribed sizes. So, on the interest of in the, uh, in the interest of industry, on the request of the industries, we have allowed that now this second schedule can be removed. But when we remove the second schedule, when we are going to remove the second schedule, we have asked that the unit sale price has to be given. And we don't have to go in the factory and say how much is the cost of this unit price when I'm manufacturing the whole product. It is basically has to be calculated mathematically. Let's for a very simple example, then the product of one kg is one thousand rupees. A product 
commodity product which is being packed in a packet of 1000 uh, 1000 rupees in 1 kg i can simply say 1 gram is how much 1 rupee very simple so it's mathematically we have to calculate we don't have to enter into a factory and just calculate all the thing and put how much will be the unit sale price it is not possible with the help of the mrp we can mathematically calculate how much is the unit sale price because we don't expect that the consumer has to do this the industry has to declare it consumer can easily see how much the unit price and he can very easily compare with the other products available in the market and as per his requirement as per his wish he can buy any product as per his information next we need month and year of manufacture it is also very important now we are actually we are having month and year of manufacture or prepacking or import right now we are allowing but very soon from 1st of october we are the day of manufacture or prepacking or import we simply say month and year of manufacture even after some of the industries are requesting that there is some problem of uh, having a large packet or having a group of packets how we will declare the month and year of manufacture or in case of import how we will declare so that is a different issue we have this is this this particular request are under consideration however right now you have to declare either month of year of manufacture or pack or import and it is very simple anybody can give somebody asked why what i have to write what caption i have to give month and year of manufacture no no need basically this this rule does not ask you to write completely month and year of manufacture you simply say mfd date mfd 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 means when it was manufactured and you can simply put 09 oblique 22 that means you have manufactured this product in september 2022 so this is very easy which can be made and nobody will is going to ask you that whether the caption of the declaration is given or not i am not asking that you have to put name and address of the manufacturer and put the name and address it is not like that it is not question answer session it is basically the requirement of the declaration what you have to give what is the requirement of the consumer that accordingly it has been made similarly one another very important provision is passed before or used by date month and year in case of commodity which is becoming unfit for human consumption with the time so these are the requirements which we have made and very important consumer care details what consumer care details where, where the consumer if he has a problem he can make a complaint or he can ask for the rectification because what we feel if a consumer knows on the package itself that i can call at this number he will immediately call at that number and will rectify the error many times i see that i used to get the regular uh, emails that i have buy this product and this product is not being repaired this product is not being changed this product is not being corrected so that these these things actually pinches a lot with when we sit at a place and we see, we see what type of complaints the consumer is making why this problem cannot be sorted out at the industry level at the factory level itself when there is a problem he has made a complaint made a request you can correct it at that level itself it should not it should not actually highlight it to the other level otherwise it simply diminish the name of a of a company because when we see two three complaints of a particular company what we feel okay okay this time that means there's a problem with the company otherwise one or two okay no, it may happen but if regularly you are getting a complaint of a particular company certainly we should put it on the website that how much complaint of a particular company is there but it is not good that we are thinking like that and we are putting it on the website this is not a good 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 way to make or to, uh, to give, make it positive or popular but see we have to consider how fast we can safeguard the interest of our consumer but this is the way how we are trying if we talk about the e-commerce e-commerce is very important with that with this covid time we came to know that many of the products are being sold through the e-commerce and some of the declarations have to be made on the on the e-commerce sites what are very very few very basic declarations we are asking not all declarations because when, when consumer will get the product he will see what are the declarations actually there and what are the declarations on the package again it is a big problem some some declaration on the website is something different when the consumer get the product it is declaration something different many times earlier now i'm not getting any type of complaints this type of complaints but earlier we used to get these type of complaints that when i buy this product there was a discount of let's say 50 100 percent 100 percent discount and buy the, i buy this product at the cost of rupees 100 but when it reaches at home the cost was rupees 90. So where the declare where the discount gone, where the all these things gone. So you know, you know, we what we want to show to the consumer, then he will never come back to the company, he will never come back, he will not go not buy the product again. So these things we can see. We don't have to you see in such a way that okay, there are 130 people, 130 crore people in the country, and we can continue like this. This is not the way. We have to be a very ethical, very, very good manufacturer of the country genuine and responsible manufacturer or the uh, buyer of the industry of the country 
Similarly, consumer many times also I come to know that consumer make the complaint. Some product was okay, even after they are saying no, it is not correct, it is not correct. So we have to have a balance in between both of ways, consumer side as well as industry side. Both should be if both are ethical, then I think there is no need of any type rule or even we there is no need for we people also. Otherwise, we will be at home because everything will move in a proper way, in a right way. But I think that it will this time will this will take some time in India to come. And I, have, I hope that we will pass our service and we will be continuing with this role as what we are doing today. So what we are asking in the case of an e-commerce entity, name and address of the manufacturer or the importer has to be mentioned on the website. Country of origin if imported, common or generic name of the commodity, net quantity in a standard unit of weight measure or number, MRP, which is inclusive of all taxes, and pass before or used by date, month and year, in case of a commodity, which become unfit for human consumption with time. So these are the basic definitions, basic requirements, which we are requesting from an e-commerce entity to make, to ensure that these declarations are being made by a seller on their websites. And we requested the e-commerce entity, earlier there was a problem, but I think now they have made this provision without filling this data, the product will not be updated on their website or uploaded on their website. If the data is wrong, if the information is wrong, that is the responsibility of the seller, not the e-commerce entity. But to have the data, have this information on the website is the responsibility of the e-commerce entity as well as of the seller. So we are regularly uh, observing, we used to regularly observe whether these are complying, or these are being complied or not. Even we used to issue the notices. Many notices have already been compounded. Many cases have been compounded. So also not compounded, we are putting it into the court of law. Rule 610 of the legal methodology, package commodities rules, speak about the e-commerce entity that this and the e-commerce entity, all e-commerce entity has to ensure that all the man, all the mandatory declarations required under Rule 61 of the package commodities rules, except the month and year in which commodities manufactured or packed shall be displayed on the digital or the electronic network used for e-commerce transactions. So this is basic general requirement for all e-commerce entities that it has to be given on a pre-packaged uh, pre-packaged commodity when they are selling on the through the websites through the digital platforms if we talk what should be the size of a uh, of a declaration on a pre-packaged commodity again there is a big problem people say we don't understand what is there earlier there were uh, there are different different tables different different rules but we have now all harmonized we just have a single table just i'm showing you in front of you this this is a very simple table and you have to consider what will be the size of a particular letter or number on a pre-packaged commodity it is very simple what it says if the size in the area of the principal display error. Again, we'll take this. This is the packet pre package commodity. This area, this area, and this curved area. All area we will add. All this area, if it is less than 50 square centimeter, less than 50 square centimeter or equal to 50 square centimeter, the size, the height of the numeral and the letter will be 1 mm. It is very simple. There is no dispute. How much is the quantity? Forget it. How much is anything else? Nothing is required. Sorry, table some here. Now, just we have only one table. According to this, if the area, and this is being taken from the international level, this is not our own. This we have taken it from the international OML standards. We have covered, we have considered, and accordingly, we have put this table under which this 50 centimeter square. But if the letter or the number number has been blown formed or molded on the surface of a container, its size is double of that, it is 2 mm. Similarly, if the area of a principal display, area of principal display panel of a pre-packaged commodity is in between 50 and 100 square centimeter, the size of the letter of numeral will be, height of the letter of numeral will be 1.5 mm. And for molded surface, it will be 3 mm. Again, from 100 to 500, it is 2.5 or 4, 500 to 2500, 4 and 6, and 2500 above 2500 sorry 2500 square centimeters the the letter height or the numeral height will be 6 mm whether it is printed or it is molded 6 mm is more than enough so this is a very simple table and i can understand i don't understand if there is any problem and see if you are again ask i'm telling you if you are putting the caption name and address of the manufacturer i am not concerned about that caption i am only concerned the name and address of the company which should have the size of the letters and the numerals according to this table. And it is very simple. If you feel any problem at any point of time, we are always able or available to help you out. Important provisions under the package community rules. If we talk some of the new provisions we have discussed, we are discussing under Rule 18.2, it is very clearly mentioned, no retail dealer or other person, including manufacturer, 
packer, importer, and wholesale dealer shall make any sale of any commodity in packed form at a price exceeding the retail sale price. So overcharging is not allowed under Rule 18.2. 18.2a speaks that no differential MRP is allowed. A single package prepackage, uh, the, the identical prepackage commodity cannot have two different MRPs. It is again defined under rule 18.2a. 18.5 speaks that no wholesale dealer or retail dealer or other person shall obliterate its month or alter the retail sale price once declared. It has been declared, declared. Nobody can change after that until unless there is a permission of the government of India that you can change or you can revise the price due to the change or revision of tax. Otherwise, there is no provision to revise the price. Similarly, again, we ask that all the manufacturers, packers, and importers have to get registered either from the controller of the state government or to the director of the legal methodology or at the, at the center level, all portals are online. You just have to submit an application. If any document is required, we will send back an email to you or send back this on the portal itself. We will mention that kindly upload this document. When you will upload this document, your registration will be done automatically. It is a very simple system and we used to see, I am seeing that very maybe it does not take more than three four working days within three four working days the all the registrations used to be done but my request is finally get it done through the state government because at the central level registration is not the not not the actual work of the, at the central level it is very simple work which has registration can be done at the state level itself however if somebody is submitting an application online we are getting it done within two three working days otherwise there is no problem it's a registration it's not license very clear there were some amendments made in the package commodities rules, which were earlier expected to be implemented from 1st of April. Some of them I have already, I have already discussed and few I am discussing now. And uh, some of that up, uh, on the request of the industry, on the, on the, in the interest of the industry, because they were not ready to implement from 1st of April, it was decided that we can make it from 1st of October. And now all these, all these new rules will come into force from 1st of October. What the rule says, rule 2AA, nothing, it is under this rule we have just made the, we have incorporated the new consumer protection act, not 2019, as the at new act has come. We are happy to see that from 2019, after 1986, we are having now consumer protection act in the interest of consumer to safeguard the interest of consumer. And we are having, I think, uh, our joint secretary Saab is also an investigating officer for this uh, uh, CCPA. Central Consumer Protection Authority. So basically, the Central Consumer Protection Authority under this Consumer Protection Act is working well. A lot of, lot of things have been done. A lot of, lot of new changes have been done. A lot of industries have been requested to make the things proper in the interest of consumer. Similarly, again, Rule 4 have, was amended for promotional offer, which was earlier given in Rule 5. We have put it in the Rule 4 because Rule 5, which was related with the 19 commodities, and value-based packages has been omitted or will be omitted from 1st of October. Still, it is there. From 1st of October, it will be omitted with the 19 commodities uh, which are given under the second schedule. And the value-based packages definition, which was given under this Rule 5, now have been taken into Rule 4. And Rule 5 is completely omitted. Similarly, second schedule will also be omitted. 6.1D, we have amended that earlier, the declaration of month and year of manufacturing, manufacturing and importing was allowed, but from 1st of October, we are requesting from the industries that kindly give it only the manufacture, the date of that month and year of manufacture. Again, Rule 61E, there was a lot of confusion among the industry, among our state government officers, where they used to put the issue, issue the notices, they used to issue the compounding notices, etc. And that because you know there was some illustration how an MRP will be declared, because there was an illustration XX point XX. Similarly, there were, there were a lot of, a lot of uh, illustrations were made and people thought that the declaration has to be made in this way only. And now, we are, after this, after considering a lot, we consider that there is no need of illustration. The MRP should be declared, which should be easily understandable by a consumer and anybody can declare it or an industry can declare it in a way. But this should be inclusive of all taxes in Indian currency. The MRP should be given in Indian currency only. Again, there is a provision which we have made about the unit sale price. This is this has been introduced under Rule 611 of the Prepackaged Commodities Rules. Now this rule will come into force from 1st of October. Under this rule, if we talk about the unit sale price in rupees, rounded off to the nearest 
two decimal places. Basically, the rupee it should be in rupees and it has to be rounded off in the nearest two decimal places. Shall be declared on every prepackaged commodities in the following manner. Very simple. Per gram, when the quantity is less than one kg, it means if you are if you are packing a prepackaged commodity in the terms of in the value of nine hundred gram, the unit sale price will be in terms of one gram. 950 gram in terms of 1 gram, 990 gram in terms of 1 gram. But when it is 1 kg, there is no need to put the unit price because 1 kg and unit price 1 kg is the same. Similarly, if it is 1 liter, it will be up to 1 ml. And then when we go above 1 liter, it will be in terms of 1 liter. Above 1 kg, it will be in terms of 1 kg. Or in, when it is in terms of length, it will be in terms of per centimeter. When it is or one, when it is up to one meter and above one meter, it will be in terms of meter only. So this is the way how we have we have simply simplified this declaration of unit sale price. I say this 900 gram cost is 900 rupees. I will simply say the unit sale price is one rupee per gram. Simple. And if I say 900 ml, 900 ml at a cost of rupees 900 rupees. So what I will say. One rupee per ml. So this is the way how we can simply divide mathematically and can put the value of unit sale price. Provided that for packages containing alcoholic beverages or specious or specious liquor, the state excise laws and the rules made thereunder shall be applicable within the state in which it is manufactured. Because so, excise ji, laws already, sir. Ashutoshji, uh, there is a query that uh, on a package, how are they to denote? Uh, the unit price should it be written rupees then uh, 5 per ml or uh, rupees 5 per centimeter or what is the deno uh, denomination or how it is to be depicted on the package agar wo word mein likhna hai ya numeral mein likh sakte hain ye baat uh, puchi ja rahi hai usko bhi thoda explain kar de Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, I have, I have not seen this question, uh, question because I'm on the uh, panel side, so I don't questions. Nahi aare. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So, actually, when we are giving this uh, declaration, 1 kg, 1 ml, Sim as far as told, simple way, in a very simple manner, 1 900 gram cost is 900 rupees. 900 gram cost is 900 rupees. So, its unit price will be rupees, either symbol or RS dot 1 oblique per ml per gram oblique per gram or you can say per per g only g g gram is g because we don't put complete word gram it is not the practice or gm gm is not correct internationally we don't write like this gm and gram however if you are writing nobody will make a complaint nobody will make a case or nobody will book a case because it has already been allowed oh yes somebody has written rupees per ml all right it is very well manner no problem rupees oblique ml it is correct see purpose is it should be understandable nowhere we have mentioned that it has to mention per gram it is not required for rupees one oblique g finish it will be very clear rupees one per g rupees one per ml so either per or oblique both ways you can do it there's no problem at all it should be just clear to us that clear to the consumer that what we are writing USP, whether uh, yeah, unit sale price. USP, yes, USP. You can mention uh, where that it is the unit sale price, uh, because otherwise, you know, at the international level, basically most of the manufacturers are aware of that. That at international level, we have a different background. This will be the even the sizes are different when you put the total price or MRP and the USP. There is a there is a way of declaration. There is a way of uh, giving that uh, giving the depiction on the package but in this way you can simply put either usp and if we uh, usp is the very simple word but slowly sooner or later slowly and fast we have to make this one also popular usp we have to start speaking usp 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 so that tomorrow the person the consumer should also understand when we are talk uh, when we are saying usp it means unit sale price otherwise you know tomorrow somebody will say i don't understand what is usp we have to make it clear but Again, there is no way because I, and I can understand we don't have the uh, this much space on the package that how much will be that we cannot mention everywhere unit sale price. It is a big world. I, I can understand there will not be it is not possible. However, 
this law does not speak to ask you the caption usp is the caption that's why i'm from the very beginning i'm saying this law asks the declaration we are concerning we are booking the case we are asking the declarations if you have not mentioned it should be that's what we expect when somebody is putting mrp it is very clear mrp can is be read what they are doing it is very good but it does not mean if mrp is shorter or lesser we are booking a case or we are issuing a notice on the short size or something wrong on this declaration of mrp but the value of mrp should be correct it should be as per the rules that is the only requirement of law next we say about the uh, if anything problem we will again come back to the questions i have sufficient time we have just discussing the package commodities rules we will take all the questions again and again until unless it is very clear and if it is required sir with the help of your with, with your kind permission we will make this pre package commodities rules presentation again because today unfortunately i could not contract large number of dcos this year i wanted to take it in this conference so that they can also understand what is the requirement of the pre packaged commodities when we are going to away create awareness among the consumer we will do it very soon again yes certainly we need to clarify how these uh, depictions and uh, writings have to be done you have clearly yes, specified that but in case there is a requirement of more awareness to be generated we will take questions at the end of the session and maybe we'll have multiple sessions like these in the coming weeks uh, and sir you. with the help of and sir with your help we can easily make it popular through the twitter through the uh, you used to yeah, do that jago grag jago also we are campaigning we will be increasing the awareness constantly we will be putting up these on our twitter and all social media handles as to how these declarations what are the mandatory declarations and what is the format of declaring these on the pre packaged commodities we will be taking up all these uh, awareness so please keep watching our uh, jago grag jago uh, twitter handle or our website thank you thank you sir provided further that declaration of unit sale price is not required for the pre packaged commodities in which retail sale price is equal to the unit sale price as i told you if it is 1 kg 1 liter there is no need to again put 1 kg mrp is 100 rupya and usp is 100 rupya so there is no need to write again and again the same thing only the unit if the unit sale price and mrp is same then we have to put only once again under rule 135 it was amended for declaration of net quantity in number for i because there was again a big problem again we were getting that lot of uh, complaints lot of notices are being issued on declaration of number because it was mentioned that either n or u has to be mentioned but now and why, why this particular amendment we have made it very clear it should be clear to the consumer it is one pair one piece one set want any word which is very clear to the consumer there is no problem and even after if you now somebody was asking me but sir now there is number complete number so whether we have to put the unit or number i said no if you are putting u or n you can continue with that because this is for the benefit this is not that uh, now we earlier we were putting u and n now we you have removed u and n u and n and again we will start issuing the notices for the because you are not using the new words these are the illustrations these are not the exactly the same words the similar type of words can be used for the clarity of the consumer rule 182a again was amended for just mentioning the new consumer protection act 187 was amended to name the correct which is gst now and rule 32 332 uh, will be omitted when which was giving the permission for non standard packages non prescribed sizes of second schedule but it will be done from 1st of october still it is in force we have made a very good provision under this amendment why this amendment because we aware we were aware that may be possible that this rule was made in november and now we are amending it in march may be possible that few of the industries have already started or implemented our earlier amendment so we have given our the legal methodology officers are the team and the senior officers very were very aware of that that there should not be any confusion to the industry and this provision was made that no prosecution shall be initiated against the manufacturer or packer or importer of a pre packaged commodity for making declaration with impact from 1st april in accordance with the earlier amendment or the new amendment which is going to publish now so either you are implementing immediately or you want to implement it later on from 1st of october it is very clear no offense or no case will be booked no prosecution will be booked you can do it at as per your wish or as per your convenience you can start so this is very simple and very easy thing 
again we have made a very simple amendment just recently in on 14th of july which is basically uh, actually now the legal methodology is going to be digitalized we have made a provision that the digital declaration will also be accepted or will be accepted on the uh, digital on the electronic product initially we are just going to do it uh, as a pilot project if it will be successful and the consumer and the public and the industry will be happy with these type of declarations certainly we can move further we can think other things also what it says in case of an electric electronic product which is manufactured or packed or imported after 15th july 2022 we have given a date because we wanted to make this provision for one year so that's why this date is given from 15th july 2022 it came into force from it came it was published on 14th july but this provision is published this is from 15th july 2022 the package of such product shall for a period of one year from such date declare the name of the manufacturer or packer or importer as the case may be on the package itself that means on the package we have to declare the name or and name only name the name of the manufacturer packer or importer on the package and such declaration shall also inform to the inform the consumer to scan the qr code on this declaration itself it will be mentioned that for other declarations kindly scan the qr code this will be mentioned on the package for the address and other related information if the address is not printed on an electronic product then this particular product will be having a qr code by reading the qr code a consumer can read the name name will be on the printed on the package again a name can be given in the qr code there is no problem but address will be read will be read by the qr code however the provision is that in case such information is declared through the qr code and not declared on the package somebody says i am manufacturing my products electronic products and i am giving all declarations of the package itself i don't want to put the qr code this is not uh, my cup of tea so you can continue with it there's no problem no necessary no mandatory that you have to declare it through the qr code qr code is on the willing of the willingness of a consumer sorry willingness of an industry if they want to declare the address of the manufacturer or the packer or the importer through the qr code they can declare it through the qr code however if you are giving it on the packet and you want to give it through a qr code also it is very good you are again allowed if you are giving it on the qr code through the qr code on the package or package and qr code both it is up to the industry only they can decide and they can declare but if it is not given on the package then it has to be given through the qr code it should be very clear but name and name has to be given on the package itself name is mandatory address you are having a your liberty you can decide either printed or through the qr code this is one provision we have made second is we have made that when the this package commodity is uh, is consumer can consumer can scan the name generic or the common name the first is address second is generic or common name it can also be given through the qr code if it is not declared on the package if you want to declare on the package and don't want to give it through the qr code it is allowed if you want to give through a qr code and the package both it is again allowed but if you are not declaring on the package then it has to be given on through the qr code it is necessary somewhere the information has to be given so first is address second is generic or the common name of the commodity then now the third one is when you are talking about the third one it is for the I'm sorry. It is for the package of such product for it. Inform the consumer to scan the QR about for the size and dimension of the commodity. If you don't want to put the size or dimension, then again you can put it through the QR code. One very good example, which is the rule sub rule two. Sub rule two again it has been given. One is address. You can give it either through QR code or on the package. Second is common or generic name. Third one is its size and dimension of the commodity, and the fourth one is the, the information about the consumer care details, except except telephone number and email ID. Telephone number and email ID will be given on the package, will be given in the printed form. However, the name and address of the consumer care details can be given through the QR code. QR code plus printed allowed through QR code only allowed. Only the, what information, name and address of the consumer care officer, name and address of the consumer care person. 
but at the same time email id and telephone number has to be given on the package itself so that if a consumer who can who does not read the qr code at least can contact through this mobile number or the email id to the company this is a very big change in the actually the digitalization the concept is of the digitalization that the qr code is now becoming more and more popular but again we have to be very careful it should not happen that the information can be changed with a click and that's why in mrp is not allowed month and year of manufacturing is not allowed these declarations it has to be printed on the packet itself because we are all aware with a single click that all the information on the qr code can be easily changed so this is an information which is not which is actually not very important but still required for a consumer but however you are allowed or company is allowed to give through the qr code again fourth schedule of package commodities rules uh, we have recently issued a guideline an advisory earlier we were getting large number of complaints regularly we are we were getting the complaints that this uh, edible oil there is a big problem with the with, there was a big problem with the edible oil what they were doing uh, few of the companies they were continuously uh, reducing the weight keeping the volume constant volume and give, increasing the temperature because we are all aware that temperature and volume are related to each other but the weight is constant and under the second schedule if we just go through this rule what it says the fourth schedule of package commodities rules provide that the net quantity for non edible vegetable oil edible oil and vanaspati ghee and butter may be declared in volume or weight it may be declared in volume or weight however the second schedule declares asked for the edible oil and all the net quantity if it is declared in volume it must be declared in mass also that means if the edible oil you are selling in volume then weight has to be mentioned but it was observed since last many uh, many days that the volume was 1 liter but earlier it was 950 gram 925 gram 929 gram 890 gram and this is the way how they were putting that this is 1 liter at 50 degrees celsius 1 liter at 55 degrees celsius and it was very difficult because 50 degrees celsius and 55 degrees celsius i don't understand from which where this concept came because the law does not allow that you can mention the temperature and that's why we have issued very clear direction to all the industries what we have asked there is no requirement or provision of mentioning a specific temperature on packaging of edible oil which may cause cheating to consumers so i have seen these industries this packing edible oil industries personally many times in many industries i have seen the temperature is at the actually 20 degrees celsius when they they want they are actually packing or making this paper this edible oil and sell, packing it in a bottle so this is about 20 less than second schedule has to be adhered to and the mass also has to be declared that is a requirement and whatever temperature and whatever volume they declare that is fine but the mass also has to be declared that yes, is sir. the main crux of yes, the sir. yes sir So sir, now uh, temperature was not required, which was which was causing uh, cheating actually the consumers because weight was continuously reducing. However, volume was keeping constant one liter. So what we have requested, we have requested to the state. The advisory has already been issued on 15th of July. We have requested from the state governments to create awareness among the manufacturers, packers, and importers of edible oil, etc., to pack the commodity without mentioning temperature. This is very simple. We have asked that first of all we should make them uh, aware that this is not required. This is not as per the law. to advise them to ensure that the quantity declared on the package in volume or mass should be correct whether you are declaring it mass volume in all the units it should be correct if you are saying it is 1 liter i have a right as a legal metallurgy officer i have right to check at all the time it should be 1 liter if it is less than 1 liter certainly i will book a case of short delivery and if you are ready to come out all right other we will put it into the code of law the no not immediately we have given some given some time for that the manufacturers Packers or the importers may be advised to correct their labeling of declaring net quantity in the units of volume within six months from the date of this direction. This is 15th July, and after within six months, it has to be corrected. Temperature has to be removed, and this otherwise we will take action as per the law, without which which should be without mentioning the temperature. And field officers, it is also requested from the state government that field officers may be instructed, and we want to create an awareness of it. This advisory is available on our website. that anybody can see it properly read it properly and if you have any doubt anything you can always you are always most welcome to discuss it with us but it is very clear it should be 1 liter means 1 liter whether it is a chennai or ladakh because rule does not allow for different quantity to different buyers different set of buyers 
for e-commerce entities also, we have issued a large number of advisories. For an e-commerce entity, if we talk that all e-commerce entity should be prominently display all mandatory information required under the legal methodology package commodities rules at one place. It is again, as per the package, the information is scattered at all places. And somewhere you have to put the label and you put, have to put some uh, something on the package and then see there is some information uh, hidden under this. So this type of things should not happen. It should be at one place. Even after I'm observing, we are seeing that it is not there and we are issuing the notices also. Declaration of foreign countries name mandated under the law should be in full form. It should not be the abbreviation of the world. Make a provision on the e-commerce website so that sellers should not be able to upload their products if all the mandatory information is not given by the or displayed by them. So this is, I think, they are doing and all the information, most of the information is now, now uh, available. We have issued large number of notices for non-compliance of provisions of Act and rules for prepackaged commodity under Section 18 and 36 and Rule 6 of PCR. Notices were issued to various manufacturers, packard importers, Many of them have been compounded and others have already been filed or are being filed in the court of law if they are not being compounded. Similarly, for selling wing and measuring instruments, we are regularly getting the complaints that there is again a big problem and uh, there is not a you know level playing field. Some of the manufacturers and the importers are selling their products without doing verification and they are not paying the verification fees. And the manufacturers, uh, many of them are paying the verification fees and selling into the market. So there was a big difference about 200 rupees of uh, each product. And considering this product, considering this problem, they have issued the notices under section 19, 22, 23, 24, and rule 6 of PCR. Notices have been issued, some have been compounded, and others we are just going to file in the court of law. If they are not, because the time has already been passed, we are just preparing the draft to put it in the court of law. If they are not compounding, we are even not thinking to issue the reminder of notice of that. We have issued an email, we have issued a speed post letter, which has not come back to us. So that means it has been delivered. So this is the way because it should be a level playing field, and it's the requirement of law that every piece, government piece, has to be paid. There is no relaxation with the government piece. So these are the basic prepackaged commodities. I think that uh, uh, this is more than enough. I don't want to discuss more about it. And uh, now I think we can take few questions because there, there must be large number of questions available here. And uh, because otherwise legal methodology, I have a lot of other things which we can discuss. Packaged commodities, I don't want to discuss anything. Yes. So. Yes, we have some questions in chat box. I'm just going to take one by one. I, uh, data sub is also here. Sir, kindly see if uh, you kindly reply when some of the questions, uh, I'm reading questions, sir, you kindly reply. Yes, nomination of one director. Nomination of one director is mandatory. If he is if his name is registered, sir, what he says nomination. I'm sorry, mera cursor thora prashan kar raha tha. I'm sorry. Nomination of one director is state wise or one central nomination for companies acceptable if this online or offline. See, uh, one, as uh, one, per central, law, one central nomination is accepted for throughout the country. Yes. Even the provision of the law speaks that you have to nominate a director and you have to inform to the legal methodology officer. But in many cases, when it is being registered or is being no nominated to a particular state, the other state government says that, okay, it is not with us, it is with the other state and we don't consider it. So we are not going into the debate of that or into the dispute of that. If you want to get it nominated, you can submit an application which is online on the central government portal. So that thing has to be done. You just submit an application on this online portal and within it, within two, three working days, maximum five working days, the certificate is used to be issued for the director's nomination. And this will be acceptable throughout the country. There will be no problem, which is being done by the director, sir. Next is for writing unit sale price is mentioning the word USP is mandatory. I told you already that this law does not speak. The caption has to be given. However, it will be easy for understanding of the consumer and the purpose of all of us is the same that consumer should understand and being an industry i think a responsible industry you will also like that all the declarations and the consumer is satisfied with your product so it will be better if you put usp it will be easy but it is not mandatory somewhere also whether it can be expressed as per ml or even by putting rupees per ml i think both are both are acceptable there is no problem at all rupees one oblique ml that is clear because one rupees is uh, price and per means uh, oblique is clear there should not be any problem 
kindly put the web address of the registration portal yes i am putting to all this is very good question to all all panelists yeah, all attendees sorry this is lm.doca.gov.in this is the address of the portal and you can find all the details are available you can very easily go for registration of a prepackaged commodity or for nomination of the data and other activities which are required under the legal methodology act is the package of if the package one is of one kg thing is that uh, uh, lm.doca on gov.in the candidate can apply also and candidate can get the certificate also there is yes, no yes. need of any intervention yes yes true so only the application has to be given within 2 3 days the certificate will be uploaded on the portal itself you can up download it from the portal if the package is of 1 kg then do we need to give unit sale price in rupees per ml or rupees per liter no it is not required i have already given in the rules itself the rule simply speaks that if the commodity is 1 kg or 1 liter there is no need to put the unit sale price because it will be the same so there is no need is there a usb what is required see as i already told you it is better for the clarity however law does not ask that it is mandatory to be given so you can give it or you can't give it it is up to you but law does not allow so at the address the portal address i have given uh, you can put all type of applications on this portal and this portal will take you directly to the uh, single window system single when uh, when you will put on my portal it will take you to the single window system and you can apply it will be done within 2 3 days so without any uh, in human intervention sorry Next is again the same question. It is not required uh, under rule. No, it is not section twenty-seven. It is rule twenty-seven. The package commodity registration you can get it done through the website. Or oh, but for package commodity registration, I would like to request to all is all the manufacturers, packers, importers to get it done from the state governments. It will be easy for them. It's a it's a small job. It's not license. if the address of our head office public registrar's office is changed so how can we update that online please guide you can apply for the amendment in the certificate and with the new address so giving the old certificate or if you have done the earlier certificate online you must be having the portal address on this portal itself you can apply for the amendment it will be issued the new certificate there is no problem DPCO 2013 allows 10% increase MRP for non-scheduled formulations, including medical devices. When MRP is increased as per DPCO, there is a situation when two MRPs circulate in market: old lots with old MRP and new lots with new MRP. How do we handle this situation of two MRPs as per Package Commodities Rules 2011? It is very clear: the old lot will be of the old date and the new lot will be of the new date. So anybody can see very easily this product is 2021 or this product is 2021 December or the other one was in July. So being the different lots, lot number is different, time is different, or month and year is different. It can easily be seen, and it is not the identical product. It is not the identical product. Is it possible to illustrate the same through FAQs, which will help industry to capture the formal correctly? Very good, very good. We have already done this. You kindly go through our website. We have released large number of FAQs on uh, 9th of May, and these are available on our website. Even after, if you feel that some few more FAQs are required, you kindly send it to us. Certainly, we will do that. it is more it will be more clear if visuals and practical examples are shown yes true it will be more clear if the practical examples are shown i can understand thank you we will try to uh, have next time more uh, packages with us and we can uh, we will try but i don't want to you know uh, publicity of a particular product so that's why the products we have not mentioned in the pictures we have not taken uh, the products we have not given or shown on the web, uh, on the, in this particular program uh, because we can't endorse any of the product So, if so some give, you are doing such program, uh, you should uh, add, uh, write to the important industries also, Tiki, CII, SOCM, and other peoples, so Sir. that uh, they can send their peoples of their area, and they can Sir. join also. 
इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोसिक्यूटेड so Perfect. we have to means uh, add more number of the retailers so that their awareness sure. may be increased and uh, sure, sure. people may be aware about the packaged community rules because the packaged yeah. community rules gives your uh, all the their rights rights to get the quantity rights to get their declarations for the selection of product and all that type of things so uh, so the retailers consumers industries and all the stakeholders as much you publicize uh, i think sir, our program will be more successful thank you sir certainly from the very next time i will do it in more, i will try to make it more popular sir the next question is if some give if someone give a discount of 10% extra weight then usp is calculated on original price or by including 10% extra weight this extra is not actually the price is or not of extra extra is free so we will only consider the price of that product which is actually sold to the consumer it is well articulated in from okay this is okay this is good is it okay to be redirected online printing at the crimp of the tubes see the rule is very simple wherever i am giving because the whole Whole product, whole area. We are considering the complete, the complete surface area of this product. We are considering it is a principal display panel. You can give it anywhere, but the rule says how the declaration has been given only at two places. One is printed, and the other is online information. So these, by these two ways, the information can be given. It is only applicable to audible oil or any other commodity as well. As far as temperature is concerned, declaration at with the temperature is concerned, you can see whether your product is allowed under the rules with the words when packed or with temperature. Otherwise, it is not allowed. The schedule declaration of net quantity. I don't understand schedule declaration of net quantity. Mm -hmm. What do you want to ask? Schedules means second schedule which has been omitted, and it is effective from first yeah. October. Okay, so they are asking about the second schedule declaration of net quantity. Obviously, second schedule declares the size of the package, the prescribed sizes of the commodity, how much size of a commodity can be packed in a pre-packaged commodity that is decided under the second schedule of the. This is of the obviously net quantity only. We are only concerned with the net quantity. We are not concerned the weight of the packet. We are concerned with the net quantity only. if nobody can sell product over mrp then what about malls airports and restaurant is charging over the mrp as far as malls are concerned airports are concerned i have not seen that they are selling over and above mrp if the action can be taken you kindly inform we will take action as far as restaurants are concerned the hotel and restaurant association has the has a decision of the honorable supreme court of india in their favor that they can sell their products over and above mrp because they are not all selling the products or in the hotel in the hotels they are basically giving the ambiance and all other facilities in the hotel and nobody is going to buy a pre packaged commodity from a hotel however at malls or airports it is not allowed we have booked large number of cases we will take action if something happen or we will get the information if director nomination is in place and company has changed its address in that case company has to notify and get the amended certificate or they have to apply for no new nomination certificate as far as director nomination is concerned basically the nomination is of the director 
uh, even it is not for the address basically data and the company however if you will if you fail you can certainly apply for the new certificate there is no problem in plumbing fitting products can we display the size in mm or inch because common user language is identify the products by the inches or by mm consumer also know these products by inches and mm actually what we can do we can we have to declare as per the rules as per the package commodities rules how the dimension has to be given if it is a 1 meter 20 centimeter you are 1 centimeter 20 mm you put it 1 mm 1 centimeter 20 mm and within bracket you can put it mm you can put it the word without inches because inches is not allowed however within the bracket you can put the values only the values the numbers not the units in case of any query on lm rules where we have to contact and get suggestion from department actually the department when you will ask something about from us that what is it mean we, we are basically you know we are we are the executives we cannot interpret the law the law can only be interpreted by the honorable courts of law so whenever you if you will ask certainly we will say that you please take your own independent legal advice however if you want to ask something this is a, this is basically an academic session in this academic session we are discussing this is not to take on the record and say okay this is i'm putting into the court of law that it was tell and it was told at that time and accordingly we are doing so this is an academic and awareness session it is something different when we are discussing the things however if you will ask we will go through faqs or the rules it is we are very clear rules and faq and we i think we cannot interpret because somebody i remember long back the law ministry told us that you can't interpret the law so we are not interpreting I, the, for this purpose the industry has to take its own legal advice amendment pertaining to qr code display only only applicable to electronic products is it going to applicable to other products also no right now it is for one year and it is only for the electronic products later on or sooner what will happen we will see and now, right now i am not in a position to say anything uh, one thing was uh, asked was the yeah. If uh, anybody is interested to write all the declaration on the pre-package commodity as well as on QR code, so it, it, is is optional. it is optional, they can do it. Yes, it is allowed. They can. No problem, sir. Thank you. For footwear, how to mention net quantity as per the new rules? That is unit declaration. At present, we are mentioning two number, footwear. All right, there is no problem. If you are mentioning two number, what is the problem? Let it be continued. What if existing inventory remained unexhausted after 1st October? Can that be used till exhaustion after notify, notifying the legal methodology? I don't understand because this was came in November. So I don't expect that you, much, you are having this much of inventory which will continue for years together. And I don't know if it cannot be exhausted by 1st of October, how much more time it will take. So it is very, you know, it is, it is, this is very uh, different type of questions. I can't reply. But they represent, they have right to represent. Yes, they can, they always have a right to write to the director legal methodology. And uh, if uh, how much time is required and why it was not uh, exhausted, what was the reasons with giving all these reasons, if it will be found it, that it is okay, it may be considered. Can we have one central registration under rule 27? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can get registration from the director of legal manager, even from any of the state controller. And he, he can issue a certificate mentioning all the addresses of all over the country, or not only of this state. He can also mention all addresses. But even if you find any difficulty, our portal is open to all. You can apply and you will get the certificate. No problem at all. Do we have to declare MRP and unit sale price separately if the net quantity is one unit? No, there is no need. In, a, in an e-commerce website, USP is required. No, it is not asked for the uh, unit. This USP is not asked for the. Uh, see, if it is, uh, if we, because USP provision is made under Rule 11, under Rule Sub Rule 11. I'm sorry, under Rule 611, and the e-commerce websites declarations are under Rule 610, which asks about Rule 61, not 611. So it is not required. But uh, when it is a pre-packaged commodity and you are uh, writing the unit sell price, so when e-commerce companies are selling the pre-packaged commodity, whether the, they have to write the unit sell price or not? They have to. They have to. Sir, point is, one is required, one is mandatory. 
as per the rule, when we talk about the rule 610 and 611 and 61, these are three different things. But obviously, when you are selling a prepackaged commodity, it must be having a unit sale price. And it is always good to put it on the website also, because otherwise the consumer, this is for the consumer. And obviously, it is having the on the prepackaged commodity. Whether you are giving this detail declaration on the website or not, but it is on the prepackaged commodity. So it can always be given. And it is better for the understanding of the consumer. And company will give it in their own interest. If address of manufacture is changed, then do we also have to amend the director nomination certificate? I also tell, yes, you can if you want. If you are selling a set of various products, then how can we put the unit price? Price. Okay, it's a different type of question. You are talking about a multi-piece multi -piece package or a uh, group package. Certainly, we are uh, just discussing about it, how it can be done. And if you have some solution in your mind, you can also give it because uh, I feel when let right now... Let me come in here, uh, Ashutosh, and internationally, if you have multiple uh, products which are being sold in one packet, every product is uh, labeled and a unit is given and its price is given and then a total of that price is given. So if that kind of a labeling is to be followed, that will be the only way you can describe each item and multiple items in a product or a package can be defined. So they will have to follow and we'll have to issue an international norm consideration here and we will examine it and consider it accordingly. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I think it is clear. In case of a, in case of Varaspati and Deshi ghee, how volume can be decided as it is in freeze nature? All right, then it will be in terms of mass only. No problem. When you are selling it in mass, there is no problem at all. It is only for the volume. And you must not be giving the temperature also because mass does not have the temperature. One suggestion on central website in view of multiple advisory was the advisory is effective officially. Will you please also amend the main rules too, which are already published periodically so that companies will check rules directly and avoid missing advisory, especially easier for new officers, new company. Thanks. Actually, what happened? You will find that this package community is a single book we have already published on our website with all amendments whatsoever have been made yet till now. This advisory is basically the information on the rules itself. This is not a rule. If we have to make a rule, it will be through the rule only, not the advisory. Because there was no provision on the rule and some of the people were doing it. That's why this advisory was issued that you kindly correct it. And the advisory has been issued when the it is uh, companies are not giving the correct uh, declarations and other things and the consumers are being cheated or any there is no proper implementation and all that type of things. That far very purpose, the rule has been repeated and reminders has been issued one way to the controllers as well as to the investors. The next question is, what is the difference between PDP in LM and PDP in FSSI? As I remember, the legal methodology and the FSSI rules have already been harmonized. Few, very few provisions we are uh, we are enforcing. Otherwise, rest of the provisions are being enforced by the FSSI. So there is no, I think there is no difference at all. And we are simply having at the same pace. In e-commerce websites, is it required only selling price, not required the MRP? See, MRP is very simple. And generally, people on website I have seen it is they are declaring MRP. Not they don't put the unit sale price like that. Sir, so MRP is inclusive of all taxes. Nobody can take GST or any tax over it. Then supermarket taking GST over it is it fine? No, it is not fine. MRP so the over and above MRP, no tax can be taken, and you kindly uh, send an email or a letter or giving the bill where the MRP with the MRP GST has been taken. Certainly, we will take action. We all you can approach to the local legal methodology officer from where you are making this complaint or the state government controller of your state where this is happening. Certainly, they will take action and the case will be uh, taken care of. It is not allowed. For commodities in one set sample, uh, example one in gram and one in ml, with unit sale price is required, obviously it is not required. Somebody is saying that different products are manufactured at different locations. How to put manufacture by on e-commerce website? 
see how you are declaring it on the uh, package simply you are many you, you are giving the declaration uh, of the whole product not the parts when we say that this is manufactured by or assembled by or uh, packed by so this is the this is not the problem you can put it when the assembly or when you are making the whole product the rules are applicable for all the prepackaged commodity if the yes. manufacturer is manufacturing 10 products the rule will be applied for 10 products if they are uh, manufacturing a thousand number of the products so rule will be applicable for the thousand number of the product it is the duty yes, of the manufacturers to abide by the law sir if director nomination is in place and company has changed its address we have already discussed you can change the nomination there is no problem if the director changes do we need to amend yes if the director changes then you have to change the director nomination otherwise the old the old director will always say that i am not responsible for it and the all directors will be responsible if there is no extra quantity given but discount in rupees is given how the usp to be calculated usp will be the mrp at which you are selling not the prices printed so usp means what the price you are selling if you are saying that my cost is 120 rupees but the mrp is 100 rupees selling price is 120 mrp is 100 rupees then usp will be as per the 100 rupees not 120 can we make declarations on top bottom or on flange as it is very clear that this will not cover for making for counting for calculating the display panel display area but it is not saying that declaration cannot be given it can be given for cosmetic products declared ml is it necessary to declare in gram as well to kindly go through if uh, in the fourth schedule if what it asks if it asks for this commodity has to be given in weight and volume both it has to be given otherwise i don't remember that it is required temperature declaration of ghee because ghee gets solidified okay it is solidified no when it is solid it has to be given in weight only there is no need to be, be because we, ghee we are always selling in weight so there is no question comes about the volume and the temperature some food was are ch charging more amount for business border what to do for that you may you simply have to write to the local legal metallurgy officer or the inspector of the legal metallurgy of that area or the controller of the state or to the director legal metallurgy we have already given you our national consumer helpline number in the beginning again i will share you you kindly write it and i have also shared you the cyber crime uh, number uh, help I number it is very important if something happens many of the people don't know that the complaint has to be made how we can get back our money so we have to be careful if their numbers are already available government is trying its best to support the consumer uh, for, let us know for the complaint email or number because there is such cases where airport yeah i have already told you this is number is already shared with you i will again share it sir please let us know for the uh, yeah where we can do the nomination of person you can do the nomination either at the state level or at the central level i have already shared this uh, doka portal our portal at which this nomination can be done within two three days and you will get it there is no problem we are selling a trimmer along with it we are also giving some two comps charging cable cleaning brush and then how we need to specify usb and nut quantity what you are selling the USP and the nut quantity will be of that product. Rest of the product which you are giving in the with it free, there is no need. If product is on discounted price, I already discussed. Some food malls are telling, yes, discussed. PPT, we have discussed, no problem. I will share tomorrow with the, with the uh, cert signed certificates of honorable joint secretary sir and director sir. I will issue the PPT also with the certificate. Last time also, the presentation as well as the slides were shared with all participants. With the presentations were shared. There is a challenge where there is a change in gst due to which MP mrp is increased rule 18.3 of pc rules do provide any good remedy we request you to clarify and attack you okay actually whenever there is a change in gst always uh, an umbrella or blanket permission has to be given and this time also it will be issued i think uh, by before by monday and uh, this permission this type of permission will be issued that you can increase the price as per the gst or decrease the price as per the change in gst
MRP to be mentioned as rupees or rupee symbol to be used. Anything you can do, it is up to you. Both are is used in the country and nowhere it restricts that either you have to put the RS or you can put the symbol of rupees. If someone is having only one, only leverage, then is there any requirement for director nomination? See, director nomination just help you to reduce your compounding sum. Nothing else. The responsibility is given to one person because if there are a large number of persons in a company or large number of directors in a company, then all persons should not be booked or should not be compounded for this purpose. It is in the benefit of the industry. Wholesale pay, basically, we have already given under the rule. And it is also mentioned that very few information are given on the wholesale pack. I don't think that this, this is something very important. There is no prepackaged commodity in that unit. Is there a violation for declaration by the company and one of the directors nominated in LM Act? Then what will be the compounding penalty, whether it is calculated for company and nominee separately? Actually, it will be the same for company and the nominated director only. So if the director is nominated, the compounding will be done two. One is for the company and one is for the nominated director. And if the director is not nominated, then it will be done for all directors and company. Direct all directors and company. So it is always in the benefit of the company. Five per ml per ml or five rupees five per ml. Anything you can do. Both are okay. Five rupees either you put it slash or this you can do it. Legal metrology standards, basically we have given the provision for MRP, net quantity, etc. It is basically the domain of the legal metrology. How this MRP will be declared, how the net quantity will be declared. So maybe that uh, FSSI, whether harmonized or not, but I am very well clear, FSSI in the rule itself mentioned that for these particular provisions, MRP, net quantity, country of origin, the legal metrology rules will be applicable. It is mentioned over there when we harmonized these rules. Already discussed. See, 40% area for deciding of the size of the letter and numeral. What I am saying, the area of the principal display panel is whole area, but it does not mean that when you are taking the size, size of the area, that A, that A which I mentioned, it will be 40% only. In our case and in FSI, it is the same. See, the, this is the whole area. But is 40% area will be covered, will be considered for deciding the size of the numerical letter. It will be the same. In case of contract manufacturing as OEM, who will be responsible to comply with LMAC? See, the brand owner, if mentioned, he will be responsible for it. And the mark, and if the name of the uh, manufacturer is also mentioned, certainly the notices will be issued to that. When we see all the addresses we use to take, the, whoever manufactured and for whom it is manufactured, all are responsible. So generally, in most of the cases, the, OE, the contract manufacturer name and address is not mentioned on the package. Title nomination has to be given by online or offline. In central government, at the at central government level, we do not have any provision of offline. If you'll send an application offline, we'll send it back to you. So my request is, with us, kindly communicate with online only. Don't say anything offline. We will not accept any application because I can't put your application off online or your offline application. I cannot convert through the online because the portal needs some declaration or something from you only. I don't know what is your PAN number. I don't know what is your DIN number. I can't do that. And your mobile number, email ID, it has to be done by online only. We cannot help you. Kindly do it online only. Whose name and details shall be mentioned on the label in case of contract manufacturing by OEM on behalf of the seller? Basically, who is the marketer? Who is the brand owner? His information must be given on the package, even including with all information, because if nothing is mentioned, we will consider the name and address which is given on the package is the name and address of the brand owner of the package who is selling. And the all cases, all actions will be taken against him if something happens. If same violation is on the same product, that can be will that 
can it will be offense for every product at every retail stores or it can be club actually there is no provision of clubbing at of that type what will happen if you find that there is some error or some inadvertent uh, uh, inadvertent uh, uh, inadvertent kind of delay in the declaration or not declaration in that case you can request to the central government you can write a letter for making it correction and then the, the when you will get the permission of the correction you can say that we have got the permission and we are getting it corrected otherwise the clubbing type of things are not here the labeling declarations can be uh, can be pasted in the bottom of the prepackaged commodity. Yes, you can declare it anywhere. There is no law does not say that you cannot do it. Some of the imported products like coffee, clogger, etc. are not having the MRP. Very good question. If they don't have the imported products and if they are not having the MRP, it is a very good case. You kindly send it to us or to the legal manager officer of your state or the inspector. Certainly action will be taken. It's, it is not allowed. It is mandatory. Not only MRP, even all other declarations also. If the details mentioned on the label are incorrect, what are the consequences and who can make the complaint? Anybody can make the complaint, number one. Secondly, consequences will be the same as given not. See, we are not going to say that it is 420 or it is some uh, offense, criminal offense, but certainly under the legal methodology, we will say that there are declarations in that it will be deed as no declaration. <clears throat> now it is many like FSSA, money living mistakes improvement notices to be issued given not proceedings i don't have this type of problem in our act and rules so accordingly we are working what are the provisions made as per the law however if you feel that something has to be done or something can be done kindly let us know there are some more questions i will take one or two more questions Being, uh, we, we have large number of participants available with us and uh, I think it will be difficult for me to make one or two person uh, muted. Uh, and secondly, I can't do it because this is being done by the NIC. My NIC team is working behind it and they are doing it. So what I, what uh, with all this uh, discussion, what I feel that uh, basically most of us are complying the provisions of legal methodology package commodities use because lakhs thousands of crores of packages are being made regularly and we are not facing problem up except few packages however if you feel that something can be done we are ready to help you uh, my sorry i am sorry that i am not able to mute or unmute somebody right now uh, from the attendees however you can send there is an email or you there is a mobile number also I mean, don't call please make the whatsapp and uh, send your queries send your questions certainly we will try to put it in the group or to, uh, because we have all the groups and uh, we have sent this request information in the group only and uh, i hope that it will be difficult but we tried to uh, to solve or to try to resolve most of the queries now i would like to request i think uh, my joint secretary wants to say something no, i think uh, uh, there are a lot of questions and a good discussion is already there most of the points on pre-packaged commodities we have explained our request is in case you have some more details to seek you can visit our website there's a lot of information faqs have been printed by the lm division and uh, besides this uh, you can send us the mail and we will be trying to consider your suggestions also and i think ashutosh has answered all the queries we have uh, we've tried to explain it in as simple as possible work it is for the consumers and the manufacturers we understand the concerns but all of us are on the legal side of the business itself and uh, the due declarations and everything need to be made all has been explained a lot of ease of doing business or transactions with the central government we have tried to put everything online and as ashutosh mentioned we do not consider applications offline and we consider them online there is a national single window portal also the government you can access or connect to the legal metrology 
applications and send them through that national single window system. So these all these are there and uh, uh, as simple as put that please give all the declarations on the font size or maybe the size of the numeral mentioned which is very clear in the FAQ. He explained it in the presentation again and again. Well, what are the requirements? You can put it on either side of the package. Of course, there is a limit to the size of the package and the kind of, uh, let's say, declarations and other writing we can do or some other advertisement or a brand you can put. So you just have to adhere to that. In case there are uh, any other questions, uh, we'll be ready to reply to your emails, which can be sent to Department of Consumer Affairs, Legal Metrology Division. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Dr. Sir, you want to say something, sir? No, this is a wonderful seminar. I think we Thank should you, continue sir. and we must educate the uh, consumers, traders, industries, and all the stakeholders so that we may develop by the our attitude and by the law also. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I would like to thank our joint secretary, sir, who is always uh, help, uh, always uh, ready to help us, the director, sir, and our NIC team, who is working uh, tirelessly on Saturdays and Sundays for us to make this type of program successful. Thank you, everyone, and all the participants who have participated. I have seen a large number of questions. Certainly, I will try to solve, uh, reply to this question within a day or two. By the end of this week, the coming week, we will try to solve all these, try to reply all these questions. With this, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Good day. Thank you. Bye.